Not every great game gets its time to shine. Some just slip through the cracks, even though they had everything going for them. It's a shame because these are the ones that deserve more attention but somehow got lost along the way. Welcome to Big Dan RF Gaming, and here are 10 good games that are totally forgotten. Kicking things off at number 10, we've got Alpha Protocol. This one, it's a real hidden gem if you ask me. It's an espionage RPG that, for some reason, never really got the love it deserved. Picture this, you're a secret agent, Michael Thornton, and you get to travel the world, dealing with shady characters and doing spy stuffs. But here's the kicker, how you handle things is entirely up to you. What really sets Alpha Protocol apart is its choice system. Like, I know we hear about player choice in a lot of games, but in Alpha Protocol, it's serious. The way you talk to people changes everything, whether they trust you, help you, or straight up try to kill you. It's like playing through your own spy movie where you control the plot, and your decisions have real consequences. Although the combat is a bit janky, not gonna lie. But the freedom in how you approach each mission, whether you go in guns blazing, sneak around like a ninja, or charm your way through the dialogue, is just awesome. It wasn't perfect, sure, but it had ambition, and if you're into spy thrillers with a dash of RPG flavor, this game is for you. And honestly, it's crazy to me how forgotten it's become. Alpha Protocol should have been a bigger deal. So at number 9, we have Prototype. Now, if you were around during the PS3 and Xbox 360 days, you might remember this one, but let's be real. It's a game that's faded into the background over the years. Prototype throws you into the shoes of Alex Mercer, this dude who wakes up with no memory and some seriously wild powers. We're talking superhuman strength, shape-shifting, and the ability to consume people to take on their appearance and memories. The gameplay was all about chaos, leaping across rooftops, throwing cars, and just causing all sorts of destruction in a city overrun by a viral outbreak. It's the kind of game that makes you feel like an unstoppable force, which is a ton of fun. What's crazy is that Prototype had some real potential to be a big franchise. The open-world gameplay, combined with Alex's evolving abilities, made it stand out from the crowd. But for some reason, it just didn't stick in people's minds the way other superhero-style games did, like Infamous. Even the sequel, Prototype 2, kind of came and went without much fanfare. So if you're into games where you feel like a walking weapon, Prototype is definitely worth revisiting. It might not be in the spotlight anymore, but man, it was a blast. Moving on at number 8, we've got Mad World. This game was bold, like, really bold. Released for the Wii, of all platforms, Mad World stood out with its intense black and white comic book art style and, of course, its over-the-top violence. This wasn't your typical family-friendly Wii game. You're playing as Jack Kamen, a contestant in a brutal twisted game show where the goal is simple, kill or be killed, but do it in the most creative and ridiculous ways possible. What made Mad World special wasn't just its unique visuals, but how it blended those with some of the most insane gory gameplay you could imagine. You're using chainsaws, signposts, and just about anything you can get your hands on to rack up points by creatively dispatching your enemies. It's all presented in this satirical, tongue-in-cheek way that makes it more than just mindless violence. It's almost like a commentary on over-the-top action in games. Despite all this, Mad World never really found a huge audience. Maybe it was just too niche, or maybe the fact that it was on the Wii didn't help. But whatever the case, it's definitely a game that deserves more recognition. So next up at number 7, we have Crisis. This game is almost legendary for one thing, melting PCs. Back in 2007, Crisis was the benchmark for high-end gaming rigs. If your PC could run Crisis, you were good to go. But what a lot of people forget is that beyond the tech hype, Crisis was actually a fantastic game. You play as a soldier equipped with a nano suit that gives you insane abilities, super strength, speed, cloaking, and armor. The game's open-world-ish design lets you approach combat however you want, which was pretty innovative at the time. The visuals were groundbreaking, but what really made Crisis shine was the freedom it gave players. It wasn't just about pretty graphics, it had solid gameplay to back it up. And yet, despite the praise it got for its tech, Crisis seems to have slipped out of mainstream gaming conversations. Sure, it got remasters and sequels, but the original is often overlooked. So if you've never played Crisis, where you only remember it for Can It Run Crisis memes, it's definitely worth a revisit. It's not just about pushing pixels, it's a great mix of action and strategy that still holds up today. At number 6, we have a game that is a bit of an oddball in the Far Cry series. When you think Far Cry, you probably imagine guns, explosions, and maybe some crazy villains. But this one threw all of that out the window and dropped us right into the Stone Age. You play as Tacker, a hunter trying to survive in a world filled with woolly mammoths, saber-toothed tigers, and rival tribes. Instead of guns and grenades, you're wielding spears, bows, and taming wild animals to fight alongside you. The setting is what makes Primal stand out, 
It's this brutal, untamed world where survival is the main focus. The game's crafting system has you scrounging for materials to upgrade your weapons and gear, and the sense of immersion is unlike any other Far Cry game. But here's the thing, it seems like people quickly forgot about it. Maybe it was the lack of traditional Far Cry elements like modern weapons and vehicles, or maybe the prehistoric setting just wasn't what fans were looking for. Either way, the idea was great, and it's a game that deserves more love. I mean, I still play it till date, and it just never gets old. Halfway through at number 5, we got Freedom Fighters. Released back in 2003, the game had you leading a resistance movement against an alternate history, Soviet-occupied America. You play as Chris Stone, an average New York plumber who finds himself becoming a revolutionary leader, kind of like a glow-up, in it. What made Freedom Fighters stand out wasn't just its story, but its squad-based gameplay. You could recruit fighters to your cause and command them in battle, giving the game a nice tactical layer that was ahead of its time. You'd capture key locations, build a resistance, and slowly take back the city from the Soviets. The sense of progression, from small-time rebel to leading a full-scale insurgency, was really satisfying. And here's the thing, it was made by IO Interactive, the same team behind the Hitman series. But for some reason, Freedom Fighters has largely been forgotten over the years. Maybe it's because it never got a sequel or a remaster, but this game had so much potential. Also, if you made it this far, don't forget to like, subscribe, and also turn on the notification. So at number 4, we have Mad Max. While it may not be completely forgotten, it definitely doesn't get the attention it deserves. Released in 2015, this game came out at the same time as Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain, which kinda got it overshadowed. But honestly, Mad Max is a solid open-world experience, and more people need to know about it. Said in that gritty post-apocalyptic wasteland we all know from the movies, Mad Max puts you in control of Max himself, building up your car, the magnum opus, and battling it out with raiders, scavengers, and all sorts of nasties in a massive open world. The car combat was a standout feature. I mean, launching harpoons at enemy vehicles and ripping them apart piece by piece, that was pure chaos and so much fun. What makes Mad Max so unique is its atmosphere. The desolate, windswept deserts, the towering storm systems, it really felt like you were surviving in this unforgiving wasteland. But somehow, despite its quality, it never quite hit the big leagues. Maybe because it was up against such a juggernaut like Metal Gear. But whatever the reason, Mad Max is worth trying out. So next up at number 3, we have Ghost Recon Wildlands. Now, this one had a lot of potential when it first dropped in 2017. It was Ubisoft's first fully open-world Ghost Recon game, set in the massive, sprawling landscapes of Bolivia. You and your squad were tasked with taking down the Santa Blanca cartel, and the game gave you the freedom to tackle missions in whatever way you wanted. Stealth, all-out combat, vehicles, helicopters, you name it. But for some reason, Wildlands didn't stick around in the gaming conversation for long. Maybe it was because it launched with some bugs, or maybe because the open-world formula felt a bit repetitive over time. Even though it had strong co-op gameplay and a massive open world to explore, it seems like Wildlands just faded into the background, especially after the rocky launch of Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which kinda took the wind out of the franchise's sails. Despite all that, Wildlands is a solid game, especially if you love tactical shooters with a bit of freedom in how you approach missions. It might not get the recognition it deserves now, but if you're looking for a fun, open-world tactical experience, it's definitely worth a revisit. So at number 2, we have The Surge. Now, The Surge is somewhat forgotten, especially when you compare it to other games in the Souls-like genre. Released back in 2017 by Deck 13, this game gave us a refreshing twist on the familiar Souls-like formula. Instead of dark medieval fantasy, you're thrown into a dystopian future where you're decked out in an exosuit, fighting against rogue robots and crazed humans. And yeah, it had a super cool mechanic where you could target specific limbs of your enemies to get better loot. Definitely a unique idea. But here's the thing, while it grabbed some attention when it came out, The Surge never reached the same level of popularity as the heavyweights like Dark Souls and Bloodborne. And even though The Surge 2 improved on a lot of the original game's mechanics, it just didn't make a huge impact either. Over time, The Surge has kind of faded into the background. So, while it's not completely forgotten, The Surge definitely doesn't get the recognition it deserves. Finally, at number 1, we have Sleeping Dogs. Released in 2012, Sleeping Dogs took us to the vibrant, chaotic streets of Hong Kong, blending undercover cop drama with a fantastic mix of martial arts combat, gunfights, and parkour. You play as Wei Shin, an undercover cop trying to take down the triads from within, and the story does a great job of mixing action with emotional sticks. The combat system was tight, with some real Batman Arkham vibes in its fluid martial arts fights. The world was full of detail, from street races to brutal melee brawls. But here's the thing, despite all that, Sleeping Dogs never became the breakout it deserved to be. It had solid reviews, but it was always overshadowed by giants like GTA and Saints Row. 
And even though it has a cult following over time, it seems like this game slipped out of the mainstream conversation. No sequel, no real follow-up, and it kind of just faded away, which is a real shame. If you're into open-world games that offer a unique setting with a gripping story, Sleeping Dogs should definitely be on your radar. It's one of those gems that deserves to be talked about way more. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and also turn on the notification. Lastly, make sure to drink water and get some sun. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.